Alright, so this is the tutorial for level 3 of all story missions. So you're going to want to come in here to Amber's Dungeon. And you're going to want to go over to the costume selection. And then you're going to buy Cool Lisa. Because you need this to start the fifth mission, and this is the best time to get it, so it's better to do it now. So then you just go over and talk to Comic Book Guy and start the mission. This is another nerd race, there's nothing too special, just a couple of reset tricks and shortcuts. So you take this little stairwell here, and never hit that trap there. Go and grab this vending machine. As you take this shortcut, then you down here. If you get hit by that, because it is based on a global cycle for the level, if you hit that, that's fine. Just reset your car. Uh, you take that jump to come down here to the squid port. Now, what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to drive full speed at the wall where the uh, comic is and as soon as you hit the wall you're going to want to hit reverse and hold either left or right on the control stick so that you will use the, mo the backwards momentum you get from hitting the wall you use that as momentum to push you backwards and turn your car around really fast. It's a little time save, I think it saves maybe about a second of getting the comic and then turning around the normal way, so you can do it if you want, it's really easy, it's super free. If you don't want to do it, that's fine, it doesn't lose that much time. So anyway, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn here and whenever you, as soon as you see the, whenever you pass through the wrench, that means that you're close enough to this set of road, so that if you reset your car, then it'll put you here instead of down on the squid board. It's a very useful reset trick for this level and level 6. Then you just take this shortcut in reverse. Again, that's arms based on a global cycle for this level, so depending on how pa fast you did the previous bit will depend whether you, or not you'll make it. And you just come up here, turn around, watch out for traffic, and then that's the end of the mission. And remember to jump to skip the animation if you complete the mission. And then you run over here. That was bad. So whenever you get in the car, you'll actually reverse and come over here. Get that vending machine, and then just talk to Millhouse to start the second mission. For this mission, you want to. It's basically just driving around the Squidport map, talking to Melhouse. So you just drive down here and get out of your car and talk to him. Then immediately get back in. Then get the spending machine. Come down here. It, the first part of this level is basically the same as the Nerd Race, except you're doing it in Lisa's car and you're not actually racing. But it's basically the same movement. I would advise you go off to the right a little bit. That was maybe a bit too much. So go to the right in that bit so you'll always make the jump. And then get out here and talk to Melhouse. Another reset trick coming up here. First you gotta take this shortcut. And slow down going up that ramp. It means that you don't get as much height as you would from a normal ramp. So it means you can drive away quicker because you need to turn that corner. Alright, so coming up here, whenever you take this jump off this ramp into the sea spanker, 
There's an invisible wall at the back. As soon as you hit it, reset your car, it'll put you on the other side of the sea spanker. So, hit the wall, and then reset your car, and now you're over here. Another very, very useful reset trick in level 3 and 6. So you're going to want to come up here, watch out for traffic, and then uh, take this little shortcut, come off of it, so you'll end up here. Uh, make sure to... Okay. I wasn't careful enough. If you're not careful enough whenever you're turning your car, Millhouse will actually jump out of the way and down this little uh, cliff here. Now he can get back up, it just takes usually takes a long time. So I'd say maybe aim for parking your car over here or something so that, that doesn't happen. Whenever you finish the mission just talk to Millhouse and then as a community meme we just sorta of kick Millhouse down that waterfall because it's disgusting. Right, so now he's on to um, a reasonably difficult level. To do fast. And this is a uh, mission three bonfire of the manatees. I'm going to show you the bonfire strat, as we call it. Uh, basically the way it works is you want to get Cletus stuck over here at the arcade, behind this little building bit here. If you get him stuck there, then you can just ram into the back of his car repeatedly to get uh, all of the pickups you need to get. It can be pretty hard for beginners to learn. I'm going to show you what it would look like if you get it. See, one of the reasons why it's so hard is the traffic can really ruin your day. Like, normally there'd be two cars over here. So what you're going to want to do is uh, sit here so you slow down, down Apu. Or not Apu, uh, Cletus. Okay, it's clipped in my car. Um, basically, I'm playing at 119 FPS. One of the consequences of that is it's fairly likely that Cletus will clip through your car or drive over the top of it and escape for no reason. That's why you want to slow down in the middle of the road, try and get him to slow down so that that doesn't happen. It can take a couple of tries to get it, but it's entirely worth it. Uh, this looks good. Okay, so I got it. So now you're just going to come up here. Also, this would be a good time to explain the handbrake glitch. Uh, if you reverse, then tap the handbrake button or the emergency brake for Americans in that. So if you reverse, tap the handbrake slash emergency brake, and then accelerate again, it gives you a lot more acceleration than you'd normally get. I'd also recommend doing this for the Smithers strap in level 1. Also, whenever you get the final pickup, you just uh, reset your car, you'll be put on the other side of the wall, ready to finish the mission. Also, this guy's gonna be dead. Uh, so you just take that jump, nothing too special. Uh, drive along here, hit the trigger, spam the pause button, and go into the observatory. spam the pause button. Alright, so now we're moving on to mission 4, Operation Hellfish. So to start this mission, you're, you need to go down to the Camp Krusty to buy the school bus off auto. Now the fastest way to do this is to stand on this side of the road like I am right now. You're going to want to stand over here and try and catch a passing traffic car. You can do this by standing in front of the car, but sometimes they'll change lane at the last second or just drive straight through you without stopping. 
So if you're having difficulty, then you can just run over to the phone booth where your car is and just get the normal Malibu Stacy car. So, this looks good. Yeah, I got the car. So you're going to want to drive down here. And turn into Camp Crusty. Um, for beginners, I would advise uh, just driving over that small rock. Coming in here, getting that box and that wasp. I'm surprised I actually got that with a ground pound. So get that wasp and box if you're a beginner. If you've done some runs of the game before, you don't have to. It's just for beginners that might miss some coins or whatever. So then you're going to want to buy the school bus off auto. Now, there's two ways to do this mission. I'm going to show you the fast way of doing it. No, I'm going to show you the slow way of doing it first which is with the Mr. Ply. It's the easier version, but it is slower. So, I should probably change the title of the mission. That might be something to do. So this is what you do if you want to do the Mr. Ply slow strats. You run over to this phone booth and you get Mr. Ply and then restart the mission. That will show you where the mission actually starts normally. So what you're going to want to do is uh, drive into this hat and get a head-on collision with the first car. Now if you're doing Mr. Ply strats, don't go for this hit here on the trees, instead wait come behind him and then push him in here. Slightly slower but it's a lot easier to do because the car can actually move out of your way. So then you just come down here, take this shortcut, Alright, so coming up to the second car, stay on the left side of the road, so that he'll uh, turn that way, okay. He can bounce off that hit and actually drive into the wall of the theatre, doing a lot of damage. I didn't get it, it's completely random whether or not he actually decides to do that. If he doesn't, then just uh, come down here, try and hit him into these walls. Fairly straightforward. Then I come down here, go up the ramp, again going slightly to the left so you'll always make it. Then you're going to want to come down here and turn around and then uh, just maneuver that third car down in there. If he did it correctly he should start killing himself. So then you're going to want to come up here and instead of grabbing the wrench you'll come sideways along here so that you get uh, facing the right way, and then you would come over and get the Malibu Stacy car, and then you'd get the Malibu Stacy car, then run over to Wigan. Uh, I'm going to show you the uh, fast tracks now. So you talk to Grandpa, you, you would normally go down to the uh, Camp Cross Day as normal. And then restart the mission. As soon as you get the uh, school bus, instead of running to the phone booth and whatever, so as soon as you get the school bus, you restart the mission, and you'd end up here. Alright, so, school bus strats. You can go for this uh, head on collision, it's not necessary at all. I just like to go for it for, you know, reasons. And, okay, I got it. A bad bounce. You can put, okay kill himself anyway though. So 
what can happen whenever you push him into that tree from behind is sometimes he'll try and turn out of it so then you'll do damage to him but then he'll escape and then you'll crash into it and the thing about the school bus is it is incredibly slow to drive so uh, if you crash getting back up to speed it's not fun but um, that's a more risky strat you can do the same sort of strat that I showed where you just push him into the bottom of the bridge uh, like I did for the Mr. Plow strats you can do that as well it works absolutely fine I just like to go for that as the school bus because it's slightly faster as long as you get a good hit on him another thing you'll notice whenever you start driving the school bus is it doesn't turn very well at all But the good thing is, it is heavy. Its top speed is decent enough, it's just its acceleration and turning are abysmal. Right, so coming up on the second car, now what can happen is, if you drive along the left, he'll start turning uh, towards the Krusty Burger over here. And if you get a head-on collision with him, usually, but not always, you'll spin around and drive into the wall of the Aztec Theatre. You can then proceed to drive up behind him and insta-kill him by just driving into his uh, rear end. Um, it, that can happen with the Mr. Plow. It's a lot less likely to happen and it's a lot harder to get the second hit on him. So that's one of the main reasons we use the school bus for this mission, if we're trying to go like really fast. Um, I'll try and show it off, so you'd come down the left of this road. I didn't get it. Okay. Let's see what I can do to recover this. Um, if you miss the really good hit on him, it's a lot harder to recover it in the school bus because of how slow it is. Plus he likes to uh, turn around and juke you. Okay, I missed that. So I'm just going to restart the mission because I need to show off the other really fast strat for the school bus. And he went past the ramp so I couldn't show it off. So hopefully this time I'll actually get the really good hit. So just do this sort of normally. Okay, so I I hit him but then he uh, bounced off so I'm just going to have to reverse and kill him. That's another way that he can uh, ruin you is if he turns away really sharply then you can end up on the other side of him so you'll crash but then you'll drive away from him and then have to reverse and hit him again. So, uh, it's not really worth going for if you're like a beginner slash intermediate. I'd only advise going for that hit if you're going for like a pretty good time. Right, let's see if I get the really good hit this time. That's going to be making it interesting. Okay, I didn't get it this time either because the traffic was in my way. Although I did get a much better recovery. So you can do that if you miss the hit. Sometimes he'll go down that little shortcut with the lifting arm. If he goes down there, it's really easy to get the final hit. Right, so... You're going to want to come off that ramp like that. Uh, come off it sideways, and then as soon as you land... Uh, going to want to uh, reset your car. It'll put you on the other side of the building so you can get the really good hit and it makes it a lot easier to get that car stuck and I maybe didn't explain the ramp thing too well basically I'll just run over here and show you the angles you kinda wanna get so whenever you come onto the ramp you want to get enough height that you'll actually clear this little fence over here 
you need to get enough height to clear that and make it onto the little pier section over here. But you also don't want to be so far up the ramp that you'll actually uh, hit. You don't want to be so far up the ramp that you'll hit this bit of the sign, because then that'll actually make you land here and it just ruins everything for you. So if you're if you are going for that strat, uh, you're gonna want to come off the ramp. Uh, let's see, roughly about here. There's no real uh, visual cue. You just have to kind of get a feel for the timing. So you're gonna want to come off here. That should give you enough height to clear the fence. And then as soon as you land on the pier, just make sure you're up against uh, these buildings here. Make sure you're up against that wall. If you're too far to this side, it'll actually put you back over here whenever you reset your car, which is not particularly fun. If that does happen, then you can just do the third car strap the same way you do it in the Mr. Plow. Just remember that the school bus's turning is a lot worse. So just be wary of that. Alright, so you'd finish the mission, you'd get out of your car, and then you'd come over here and get the Malibu Stacy car out of the phone booth, and then run over and talk to Wiggum. And then you'd have to get into the police car. This is why we needed the cool Lisa outfit for this mission to start. So. Right, so uh, this is a mission where you have to follow Snake and he'll drop three pieces of evidence that you have to pick up. Where he drops them is RNG. There's rough areas where he'll drop them but the exact place that he drops them changes every run. This isn't too important for the first two drops, but it is very important for the last one, which I'll get to in a minute. Also, I've gotten some really bad snake AI. He seems to be crashing into everything. Okay, so that was a medium drop on the second one. Uh, the reason why you don't want it really bad snake AI is he starts crashing into like literally every wall. Right, so coming up here, the there's a very large range where snake can drop this last item. The earliest I've seen him drop it is at this corner. The latest I've seen him drop it is at the observatory uh, where you finished uh, mission three and where you started mission four at. So what you want to do to make sure that you don't get trolled by the drop is you want to stay reasonably far behind Snake so that you're, you'll be able to react in time. Okay, he's going to give me... That was... Right, so that was decent RNG because he dropped it before the bridge. If I had reacted in time, I could have turned around and wouldn't have had to make this jump. But I didn't make it, so I have to take the jump and then turn around. Um, a lot of the times he'll either drop it here, which is why you want to stay quite far behind him, so that if he does drop it here, you have enough time to react to it so you don't completely overshoot the jump and miss it. Because if you miss that collectible, that's the mission field. There's no way to get back to it. Um, other times he can drop it down here on the road, that's not too bad to deal with, it just means you've got, uh, whenever you collect it you just have to turn around and drive all the way around this dam bit, which uses a good bit of time. But if he drops it over this side or before the bridge and you have to make the jump, uh, you'll turn around and if you sit right at the very end of the bridge, and accelerate, you should be able to make the jump. 
if you don't go right to the edge, it's a very dodgy jump to make. You might fall and then have to reset your car. It's not too major if you do uh, miss the jump, it's just small time saves out of a bad situation. So then after that you just come down here. Watch out for this arm. Uh, there's sometimes if the arm's coming down and he, if the arm lands on top of your car on the way down, it can actually crush your car and that instantly destroys the car and if the car gets destroyed then that's you failed the mission so just be careful of that arm that comes down in that uh, little whatever you call it, shortcut so now it's mission 6 fishy deals this mission's fairly straightforward. It's just collecting a bunch of fish. Around the squid port. Nothing particularly hard about this. Just make sure you don't miss the fish. That's that's a good way to lose time, is by missing a fish. So you're going to want to turn your car facing uh, 90 degrees from the way you came into that little bit. And then reset your car so that you're facing the right direction. And then get that box there. And then from there you just kind of uh, drive about the place. Nothing too much to say about this one, other than the the hitboxes for the fish are pretty interesting because they're, they are sometimes a lot smaller than they look. Like you'd think it would extend all the way out to the end of the particle effect, like the little uh, yellow effect around it. Not always the case, especially on this one. Like, there's been way too many times where I thought I'd uh, turned my car enough to hit the edge of it, and then the hitbox has been really small, so then I'd actually miss it and have to reverse and get it. So just be wary of that in this mission. It's also a pretty short mission. Like, this is the mission basically done now. All you have to do is make this jump, and then, now, if you are on PC, then you would do what I just did, you'd slow down at the end of the bridge, and then come off so you could get to this phone booth. If you're on console, interestingly enough, the amount of time it takes for the phone booth to load up all the cars for you to select, takes longer than the low time of warping to the mission and then the time you take getting the car in the next mission. So if you're on console, don't do what I just did. As soon as the mission completes, gone, just warp to the next mission. But if you're on PC, then just come down here, go to the phone booth. Right. I'm going to show you the Mr. Ply strats for this mission first. So you get the Mr. Ply. And then go to mission seven. Which I need to rename. Right, so there are a couple of ways to destroy this limo. There's a few different strats for both the Mr. Ply and the school bus. It's really personal preference. I'll try to show off all of them. So, this is what I like to think of the traditional way of doing it. You'd uh, come around here, try and get some hits off. Then you do basically the exact same as the strats for the mission 3 4. 
with all the sedans that you have to destroy. Also, whenever you're down here, try and get him as horizontal as possible. It kills him a lot quicker. So that should be good enough. And then you'd come down here and get all the collectibles on the beach. So that's uh, one way to do it in the Mr. Plow. Another way to do it is uh, like this. So you turn around and wait for him to appear. And then you drive on. And you try and get that hit there. And if you didn't get the hit there, then just do the uh, getting him trap strat. Another way to do it is the Mr. Plow is you can try to get a hit on him and then turn around and then try and get him stuck in there I didn't get him stuck but ideally you'd want to get him stuck along this wall and then you're up behind him ramming him and then you'd go down and do the uh, the getting him trapped strat as normal if you didn't get it but now I'm going to show you the school bus strats so where is it? so I'm just going to restart the mission so it's in the right place right so one way to do it is similar to Mr. Plow strats, where you'd get a head on collision, then turn around, and then you'd try and get some hits, and then push him down this bit here. Again, that's the basic strat. Now, another way to do it similar to the second strap that I showed with the Mr. Plow is you'd go for a big hit by coming up behind him you're much more likely to get a big hit in the school bus but if you hit the wall you can't really catch up to him so it is a lot more risky to do that one another way you can do it is by not getting him stuck down on the pier like you can do that it is faster to kill him up here but you do miss coins by not putting him down on the pier so you actually uh, uh, try and get him crashed in here uh, so that's the way you do it and I am just going to show you the way that I normally do it. I normally do it with the Mr. Plow because I hate the school boss with the school boss with a passion. So uh, this is the way that I normally do this mission. I normally do the first strap that I showed where you get the head-on collision. And then turn around, try and get a couple of hits in here. Okay, I didn't get that one. And then get him stuck. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I can go over backups. If he escapes, uh, try and crash him into this little sign here or if he escapes uh, try and push him into try and push him into here that does a lot of damage um, if that feels you can always try pushing him up against the wall that usually does a good bit of damage after the, if he goes past here I would just restart the mission it's not really worth it at that point so hopefully this will go better I'll actually try the second strap. See, I got hung up on the wall there, but it's a lot easier to get caught up in the 
Mr. Ply. Okay, I didn't get it that time because I'm slow with the game. Apparently. One of these days I'll actually finish this mission. Trust me, I'm I'm good at this game. Reminder that I have a 133. Or not one a 143 rather. And I have a 133. That'll be world record by quite a bit. Okay. So this is what it would normally look like, and then you'd come down here, get that box. Okay, I don't think I've ever gotten that freebie before. So you'd kill that wasp normally. Then you'd uh, come over here. If you, whenever you go near the little ramp there, you can reset your car. Now, if you did the last bit slow. If you didn't get enough damage on the limo, or if he was just taking a while to uh, kill himself, you'd actually run over here, get the Malibu Stacy car, and then you'd talk to the sea captain, of course. You'd come over here, then you'd drive up here, get out of your car, and walk along get out, jump up here, and then walk around there and talk to Bart to finish the mission. That's only fa that that is the faster way to do it, by getting the Malibu Stacy car, but it's only faster if you uh, have time left over. Oh, okay then. So yeah, that's only faster if you have time left over to go and change your car. Normally you would still have the school bus slash Mr. Ply. So this is how it would normally look. So you talk to the sea captain, and then you would drive over here. Now make sure to not knock down these lamp posts along the left. And then you turn along here. Right, this can be a little bit tricky for beginners. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to jump on this little fence here. And then you're going to want to do a double jump to get on top of this little cross beam on the lamp post. And then from there you'll be able to jump up onto this little ledge here on the sea spanker. It can be a little tricky to learn. Also seems to be a little harder on consoles. Right, so what you would normally do if you're starting out is you jump on the, uh, this little, this big log bit and carefully walk along here, do a double jump and get on top of the sign. Or if you're going fast, you would do a double jump forward slightly and then get up here. That saves a little bit of time. And then you talk to Bart and then that would be the end of level 3. And you wouldn't normally save your game, I'm doing this so that I actually have the file saved for whenever I do the next tutorial. So then you'd move on to f level 4, arguably the worst level in the run. Because it's both long and, and it is very annoying. Very interesting physics on the canyon arrow, the car that you drive around. But I'll get more onto that in the uh, next tutorial.